A three-dimensional object can be broken down into three two-dimensional projections. A top view, a front view, and a side view. On the top front end questions, you'll be given two of these projections, labeled accordingly, and you'll be expected to deduce the third. But here's the caveat. You won't be given the three-dimensional structure as a reference. But for the purpose of explaining how these projections work, let's keep our 3D structure in for right now. And we'll even bring in our missing projection. Notice that there are two types of lines in these projections, solid and dashed. Solid lines represent substructures that we can see from our vantage point. Dashed lines represent substructures we cannot see from our view. Let's demonstrate using a simple example. Suppose I build a wall. Then I punch a hole in it. And then I build another wall in front of it, which is slightly shorter and narrower. The front view of this somewhat useless structure I've built will simply be the outline of the overall structure, constructed with solid lines, since the wall's perimeter is clearly visible. From the front view, we can see where the front wall ends, and so those lines will be solid as well. But now, behind the front layer of this wall, we know there's a second layer with a big hole in it. In our front view, that hole will be outlined with dashed lines, indicating that there is a substructure in this wall, but it's not visible from the front view. Suppose we now replicate our structure and swapped the positions of our two walls. Now from the front, our hole is visible. This is a visible substructure. And so those dashed lines in our front view projection will be replaced with solid lines. But remember that now the back wall is shorter and narrower than the front wall. Its ends are obscured by the front wall, and so its ends will be marked with dashed lines. It's important to note that all structures will be presented without perspective. To demonstrate, consider a rectangular box. As humans, we perceive objects at a distance to be smaller. So, for example, let's hide all faces of this box besides the front and back. The back face is smaller telling us that it is further away than the front face of the box. That's just human nature, and it's how we interpret distance. But on top front end questions, objects are presented without perspective. So that same box would be shown like this. Notice that now, the front and back faces are the exact same size even though the back face is further away. If we bring back our 3D object, notice that we see the same pattern. Pulling out the front and back faces, they are exactly the same size. The figure doesn't shrink into the distance, as it would in our real-life perceptions. Let's go through and explain each projection of this object. In this case, the front face is particularly easy to visualize. It's simply the outline of the figure. There are no hidden substructures from this view, so it's really straightforward. On to the top view. From the top, we will see lines at the vertices of each height change. So here, 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 here here and here, and of course at the perimeter of the object. To arrive at our top view, we pretty much just flatten the top of the object, like this. 
all these height changes are visible from the top, and so they appear in our top projection as solid lines. But what about this height change? It won't be visible from the top. It's an invisible substructure, and so in our top view, it will be marked with a dashed line. And since the indentation spans the entire width of our object, the dashed line will too. Lastly, we move on to the side view. From the side, we will see lines at the vertex of each change in width. So here, 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 and here. Like we did with the top view, we can crunch the side view to visualize it. Now, this vertex will not be visible from our side view. It is an invisible substructure that spans the entire width of our object, and so it will be marked by a dashed line. Now be careful. You might see this vertex here and say, well, it's obscured by this wall here, and so it'll appear as an invisible substructure in our side view. But notice that this vertex is perfectly aligned with this vertex, which is visible from the side view. In a situation like this, the solid line of a visible substructure will always supersede the dashed line of an invisible substructure. And so in our side projection, there will be no evidence of this vertex. Putting it all together, we can use our 3D object to extrapolate the three projections. But as we previously suggested, you'll be expected to do this process in reverse. That is, given any two of these projections, you'll be expected to visualize the 3D object and develop the third projection.